Oh, didn't see you there. Hello, this is Abibi Teneri. I'm the director of Bayonetta Origins, Teresa and the Lost Demon. Over the past couple weeks, we have shown you various glimpses of the game, and now you can enjoy the first two chapters of the story in a new demo. That reminds me, I knew that was around here somewhere. Yes, here we go. Get a taste of the picture book-esque world of Avalon Forest and experience the unique sensation of simultaneously controlling both Cereza, the apprentice witch, and Cheshire, her wayward demon companion. In fact, why don't we take a look at this enchanting demo together? Let's crack open the cover and enter the mysterious world of Cereza and the Lost Demon. Just what lies in store? For this tutorial, I wanted to give the player a lot of simple tasks just to get used to controlling Cereza with the left stick and interacting with various objects using the L button. Because you control two characters eventually, we had to put all of Cereza's actions on the left side of the controller. So instead of using, for example, A to pick something up, she uses L. It might feel a bit strange at first, but that's part of this game. I also wanted to give the uh, the stage an overall really bright and peaceful atmosphere, so you have the kind of quiet uh, water flowing with um, some butterf uh, butterflies and dragonflies. Just so players can relax and focus on um, learning the controls without worrying about fighting or anything too stressful yet. Here the player is introduced to Witch Pulse, one of the key types of magic Cereza uses throughout the game. Because dance plays such an integral part to the whole Bayonetta series, I knew I wanted to make one of Cereza's powers kind of musical, dance-themed, um, but we wanted to do it in a way that fit the younger version of the character. So we, ended up, uh, we settled upon this kind of ballet theme. The action is done by holding down the ZL button and using the left stick, which um, is possible even you know, when controlling both characters, but it was a bit difficult for some people, so we also added an option to uh, automate the, the input and make it just holding down one button to perform. We added a lot of these interact points all around Morgana's house. When the player interacts with them, they get a little snippet of dialogue, some flavor text. Uh, we actually put in different versions for the day and the night, just to give the player lots of different things to interact with and practice using that button. So now it's time for Cereza to finally enter the forbidden Avalon forest. From a really early point in the production, I had this image of Cereza running into the forest, surrounded on both sides by these you know, giant bone-white trees. Uh, I, I like also how you know the narration helps build it up, so we, we decided to put the title here and kind of have it as cold open to the, to the game. I love when fairy tales have a little illustration at the start of each chapter. It kind of gives you a little mini preview of what's going to happen. So I, I was really adamant uh, about having those here too. So I had Nishi draw these, these illustrations for each chapter. Here we have another infernal plant you can use Witch Pulse on. So one interesting thing about Witch Pulse is that it actually uses the BPM of the music playing as the basis for the correct timing to, to input. So even if you have the same object, uh, the timing you press the button will be different based on the currently playing BPM. So right now we have this uh, kind of spooky, slow BPM, which is why it, uh, it turns out like this. It works well with the tutorial too, because the player is not really used to uh, the controls yet. So the player had one chance to use Thornbind back at Morgana's house, uh, but I wanted to have them try it again here, before they had to use it right in the thick of the heat of battle. And this is of course a much more dangerous looking enemy than the little shrub back at Morgana's house. One of the things we really worked hard on during development was adding these uh, narration voiceover parts to the game. They're actually a lot more difficult than you might expect because you have to make sure that 
uh, the length of the voice line, both in English and Japanese, fits with the actual uh, length of the stage. So there is a lot of back and forth, you know, re rewriting lines, making sure they, they fit within the, uh, the allotted space. When you're making a game, you often do what's called a beautiful corner, which is one small area of the game you brush up to, you know, near finished quality for the visuals to give everyone an idea of what you're aiming for in the overall game. So this long hallway here, where Cereza kind of catches peaks of fairies before she meets them for real, this was actually the first area we brushed up as a beautiful corner. Uh, back then, the game was much darker overall, so we actually ended up making another beautiful corner that was much brighter, more colorful. Uh, but this one we kept um, because it really fit the tone of Cereza's fear right here. This was actually the very first picture book event scene we made for the game. And you can see that there's lots of different um, types of expression that we were trying out and experimenting with uh, that ended up, you know, making their way through the, throughout the entire game. So for example, you have the way that the character kind of fades out and fades back in, uh, the way the characters, um, you know, just go between expressive poses, uh, the way that the text appears at different parts of the screen, uh, lots of different things we had to, you know, gradually uh, hammer down for how, how the events work in this game. So this is where Cereza meets Cheshire the Demon for the first time. So again, ultimately, the player will be controlling both characters, both Cereza and Cheshire. But, you know, after a long time just using your left hand to control Cereza, I wanted to first ease players into the way of controlling the demon Cheshire. So for this scene, uh, you're just controlling the demon using just your right hand. So the right stick to move him and uh, the right uh, R and ZR to, to attack. So this is the first scene where the player is able to control both characters at once at the same time. I wanted to make sure that there was a long space after this just to give people a chance to get used to it. So you know, uh, as the game resumes you're able to just move them around freely. Um, there's lots of simple gimmicks that allow you to use their powers one at a time. So you do some witch pulls here with Cereza, break some barriers here with Cheshire, um, and just give people a chance to get used to controlling both characters. During development, there was uh, a lot of different things we tried out, and at one point, there were a lot of really difficult um, objects to interact with that required both players, uh, both characters, to be moving at the exact same time. And I realized that um, it kind of was a bit too much for most people, including myself. So a lot of the game is designed around that this philosophy. So you can move both at the same time, but a lot of the actual things you're doing are just one character at a time, going back and forth, working together. This is one of my favorite parts of the stage right here. I love how the, the paths each character is walking along cross over one another. And there's kind of this, this moment in every player's brain, I think, where they, they go from controlling, you know, Cereza on the left, Cheshire on the right, simple, and then it crosses over and suddenly you feel like this wire has been crossed in your mind and everything gets really confusing all at once. And, you know, that's, that's intentional, right? I want players to feel that at first because I want them to feel these two people, these two characters, aren't in sync yet. They don't trust each other yet. And that initial awkwardness is, whole, is part of this experience. And as you get used to it, as you get used to controlling both these characters, you get better at doing it and you make it makes you feel how they get to know each other. And here we have some of that teamwork. Hold down the plant with Cereza and destroy it with Cheshire. This is a combo that the player will use throughout the game, uh, using Cereza's thorn bind to hold them and then Cheshire's attack to finish them. So after progressing a bit more, here the player has unlocked something called Hug Mode, which allows Cheshire to return to his stuffed animal form. Cereza can hold him and they can move through the world together. Uh, that gives you a bit of a break, you know, from always controlling both of them. And then you can release Cheshire into Unleashed Mode, uh, when it's time to move both at the same time again. What was really important to me with Hug Mode is that I wanted to make sure that even though Cereza is carrying Cheshire, you can still move him with the right stick, right? So. For that, I wanted to kind of have a bit of the fun of, you know, when you're a kid swinging around a pool noodle, you know, just smacking stuff with it so you can pick up items with it and swing it around in a circle. It just feels good, right? Um, but you're moving Cheshire, 
So what that means is when you're moving Cheshire one way, Cereza, Cereza gets kind of pulled in that direction. Kind of like a dog owner walking their dog, but the dog is, you know, really enthusiastic, so they're getting pulled along almost. This is one of my favorite little objects throughout the entire game. It's uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, it uses both characters really well. So you move the right stick to grab it with Cheshire, uh, but then you jump using Ceres of the L button. Um, and I just love the, the sound it makes. When I was talking to the sound designer for this object, I, was, I talked a lot about door stops. You know, when you're a kid and you just play with a little door stop, the spring, and uh, it feels just really nice to, to use it. And here we have the first real battle with both characters against the fairies. All the things that the player is doing here, they've done individually before. Uh, you know, holding enemies with Cereza's Thornbind, attacking with Cheshire, switching between Hug Mode and Unleash Mode. But, you know, here you have to deal with the pressure of enemies bearing down upon you. When you hit an enemy who's been bound with Thornbind, I really wanted it to feel good, right? So. We are just talking about the feeling of punching a, a punching bag and having it bounce back and forth like a, like a, like a spring and come back and Cheshire can hit it again. So after giving you a bit of a, a cool down after that battle, the next part I wanted to kind of remind players of what they can do with hug mode. So after jumping a couple times, uh, you have this section here where Ceres is on this whirling log and you know we placed a bunch of Avalon drops just out of reach to remind people you can use Cheshire in hug mode, you know, stretch them out to different directions to, to pick up those resources. We're very careful to uh, not show the little rabbit getting hurt. We actually had um, a move back in development where Cheshire could eat the rabbits around the stage and spit out a, a little rabbit-shaped skeleton, but uh, the supervising director, Kamiya, asked me to get rid of it because, you know, <laughs> there's some things that players just won't forgive. And here we come to the first sanctuary. These kind of act as hubs throughout the, the game world. And here we're first learning how to do concocting of magic potions. When you're resting at these sanctuaries, you can see that Ceres is, you know, in the bottom here and Cheshire's on top of the arch. And as you play through the game, as I mentioned, this game is about these two characters, their growth, how they get to know one another. So as the story progresses, they actually change their pose when they're resting at the sanctuaries. So as you explore the forest, you come along these portals to another world called Tirnanog. And when you approach these portals, the kind of evil power is seeping out into the forest and corrupting it into this kind of strange, twisted shape. And for this game, one of the themes I wanted to put in was the, the concept of Cereza overcoming her fear. And to do that, I was thinking a lot back to my experience as a little kid myself. So I grew up in Vancouver, Canada, and when I was a kid, I had a paper route. And I remember um, you know, coming back from school, and it would get dark really early in the afternoon. And there was a lot of points on my route where I could save some time by taking a shortcut through the woods. And I just remember, you know, um, building up the courage to go through these paths and just how th the woods that I had seen so many times in the day would seem so more sinister and scary at night. And I wanted to really capture that feeling in the game. And here we go. So Cereza and Cheshire have made their way to uh, the portal to the Tirnanog. If you, if you look closely, when Cereza opens this portal, she actually blows a kiss to, to break it open. Um, I, th I think it's really important to include these little details to give players a hint of, you know, the woman that she will eventually become. Who knows, maybe Cereza, when she was a really little girl, she saw a certain someone break a barrier in a similar way. And now we're inside the Tirnanog. You might have noticed that the, the fairies, they have a, a motif of stained glass or a kaleidoscope. So we tried to really incorporate that into the whole feel of the Tirnanog. There's a demo available right now where you can play up to this point right here. So please give it a try. It's really a game you need to touch and play for yourself to understand. Also, progress from the demo carries right over into the full game. So just download it and enjoy.